Ah, the good old days when I actually played stuff that sounded good. Man, I've been feeling like absolute trash about my playing recently. And here's why. Good God, that is torture. Honestly, I have not done that kind of practice very much since the last episode. Repetitive, monotonous 16th notes to a click. You know, that kind of practice just sucks the enthusiasm right out of the studio because it is so unbelievably boring. Now, doing that kind of dry, straightforward practice, you know, it's not that it's ineffective, but I don't think it's optimal either. So. What is optimal? Well, we're gonna talk about that later in this video because I've been doing a lot of experimenting with my double bass practice and I've definitely learned some things. But first, we're gonna talk a little bit about gear. Having taught drums for a very long time, I can tell you I've seen a lot of people blame their gear for their playing issues. It's a really common wormhole to get sucked down because it would be nice to think that if only my gear was adjusted correctly, or maybe if I had better gear, that I would be able to play something that I currently can't play. And sometimes, sometimes there is truth to that, but for the most part, it's probably not your gear. So I say all that to say, I'm not trying to blame my double pedal here because it's a brand new piece of gear. It feels great right out of the box, but I wanna do a few things just to make sure that I don't have to think about my gear. Anytime I'm playing drums, I like to make sure at least once that all of my gear is solid. That way when I'm actually playing music, I don't have to think about this anymore. So when I set this pedal up, you know, I did just take it out of the box, put it together and throw it on the kit. I never really went through the pedal just to make sure that everything is dialed in. So that's what I'm going to do now. While I have the pedal off of the kit and I'm tweaking things, I also want to change the heads because I don't love the kick drum sound. It feels a little bit flat and I know it's also got to be wearing unevenly because I put eight or nine months of playing onto uh, this kick drum head with a single beater and then I added a second beater. So the wear on that drum head is definitely gonna be uneven. I bet it's gonna sound a lot better if we swap it out. 95% of the challenge is just as hard whether I do any of this stuff or not. So I don't want you to think that I'm trying to find some hack to make double bass easier. I'm not. So let's get our pedal dialed in, get some heads swapped, and we'll see where we're at. Now, when it comes to the Demon XR pedal itself, I wanted to make sure that my springs are the exact same tension. I noticed a very slight difference between them in the last episode, so I spent a few minutes adjusting the springs, but I honestly don't think they were imbalanced enough to really matter. Even with the springs perfectly matched, I couldn't feel much of a difference, but this was something that was still worth doing just so I can cross it off the list. My springs are officially perfectly matched. So with the springs dialed in, I then moved on to tuning in hopes that maybe a fresh kick drum head would have some kind of impact on the feel of the pedals. I got all the heads installed and even found a double kick patch for the head, which I'm sure will be useful in preventing this thing from getting messed up in the future. And while my kit does sound much better with fresh heads, I feel absolutely no difference when it comes to the bass drum. Over the years, I've gotten a lot of questions about bass drum rebound. Some people claim that a tighter kick drum head is easier to play than a loose one, or that a 20 inch or a 22 or a 24 inch kick drum have these dramatically different rebounds to them. I'm gonna have to call mostly bullshit on all of that. Now, maybe my feet have less dexterity than other drummers, that's totally possible. Maybe the drummers who are concerned with kick rebound are playing at much faster tempos, like extreme metal, where this actually does become relevant. But truly, I don't think that head tension, drum size, or even the concept of kick drum rebound is worth a lot of attention in my case. In all my experience as a pro drummer, playing dozens of kits with dozens of different pedals and different head configurations, kick drum sizes, I have never once felt like the rebound of a kick drum has been relevant. The pedal matters way, way more. So we're gonna leave that idea alone for now, but hey, at least the kick sounds way better. So my spring tensions on the Demons are now perfect. I've got freshly tuned heads across the entire kit, but I'm still having one weird issue. When I play in my natural style, I really oftentimes use quick doubles on my right foot. Just a quick right right that I sneak into my playing. I use it for tons of grooves and fills. And to be honest, over the years, it's become one of my strengths. <laughs> Thank you. 
But on the demon with these current settings, I'm having trouble executing these quick doubles. It's almost like, like 50% of the time they just don't come out as clean as I would expect them to. Now, while I'm mostly practicing double bass nowadays for this project, I still have other things that I need to work on. So I can't afford to lose my single foot speed and dexterity to this new pedal. I've got to get this pedal feeling somewhat like my old one. So I'm going to take the Demon XR back off of the kit because I have a couple of things that I want to try to get this pedal to feel a little bit more like my Redline Eliminator. Not exactly like that pedal. It's obviously not going to feel that way, but a little bit closer to that old feeling so I can execute some of my older ideas and play more comfortably in my natural style. So here I have my old Redline Eliminator pedal that I'm very used to as far as the feel is concerned. And then I have the new Demon XR. And I just wanted to put these next to each other to, to observe some differences. And there's a lot of them. First thing I notice is that the spring tensions are very different. This thing is super, super loose, like weirdly loose. I can't believe I played it that way. And this is crazy tight by comparison. So that could be one of the reasons that the feel is just so different. I might actually start by swapping out these industrial springs that come on the Demon XR. I think this might be overkill and it's just creating way too dramatic of a feel difference from my old pedal to this new one. Another huge difference that I noticed is the angle of the beaters. This one is like smack you in the shin territory. It's so far back. And these are much more upright on the Demon XR. So I'm gonna make some slight adjustments to see if I can get these beaters to sit just a little bit further back so we don't have this dramatic difference in feel between the pedals. Now actually I did not bring these pedals over here to discuss any of that stuff. I actually want to install these. These are beater weights. Now I got these on Amazon for seven dollars. They're made in China and yeah there are nicer versions of these that every pedal company makes. Pearl has a beautiful one that actually matches the Demon XR but it's three four times more expensive than this and it would take like a week or two to get here. So these were next day shipping seven bucks. We're gonna try out. Now my theory is that as a heavy beater comes off of the head and comes back down towards your shin, you know, when it has a lot of weight, it's just going to come further. But these extremely small lightweight beaters aren't going to return nearly as far because they're not heavy. So by making them a little bit heavier, I can return them a bit further towards my shin and maybe get a feel that is a little bit closer to what I'm used to um, in the Redline Eliminator. I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to find out together. An interesting development here. I've got the beater weights on the pedal and just with my right foot playing in my natural style, my right foot speed and dexterity is definitely back. It's way easier and it feels way better. So the problem is when I get out of single pedal mode, so I'm not playing in my natural style, but I'm actually working on double bass stuff like I am for this project, all of a sudden these pedals just feel like they weigh a million pounds, like to the point where I am exhausted after practicing for five minutes. I can feel lactic acid building up in my legs because the pedals just feel like cinder blocks. So realistically, these beater weights probably aren't staying on the kit. It just feels like my feet are underwater. It's way too sluggish and heavy. And I know that's not how these pedals are actually designed. We're just gonna keep experimenting because I'm confident that we can find a balance uh, between these two feels. The feeling that I'm used to that allows me to play quick doubles with my right foot and the new ultra light fast feeling um, of these Demon XR pedals. So we will keep experimenting. All right, that is enough about gear. Now let's talk about some of the useful things that I've been experimenting with this week. First, I tried doing some basic rhythms with my hands over top of steady 16th notes with my kick. This wasn't my favorite exercise, but it does allow you to be creative while you're practicing. I'd give it like a six out of 10. It's worth a shot, but not quite as focused of an exercise as I would like it to be.
I also tried to play some comfortable grooves with my hands over top of steady 16th notes on the kick. This one did help me focus on feel quite a bit because I know how these grooves should sound and feel and it's very easy for me to hear when I'm getting out of time and make small corrections as needed. Now at the end of almost every practice session, I spent just a few minutes improvising random double bass ideas with the intention of building stamina. This is similar to doing a burnout set in the gym. After you've done all of your main exercises, it's common to do one exercise for super high reps just to totally exhaust the muscle that you're training. So same idea here, right? I'm just creating tons of blood flow in my legs, allowing for lactic acid buildup with the hopes of improving stamina. But by far, the most effective thing that I've been practicing this week is subdivision changes. This is something that I've talked about for years in dozens of videos on YouTube and even more so on OrlandoDrummer.com where I have multiple master classes on the topic of subdivision work. And this absolutely holds true for double bass. So for example, in this exercise, I'm alternating between 16th notes and 16th note triplets. The 16th notes are pretty slow, so I'm focused on control and good feel for those. But when we switch to the 16th note triplets, the challenge becomes a little bit more speed oriented, and this has helped me gain a ton of stability and control with my feet. Highly, highly recommended. This is a 10 out of 10 exercise. Another practice method that's been really helpful for me is playing this mimicry game with my feet. To do this, we improvise a pattern with our right foot in a groove. This is gonna be something that you can already play super easy. Then, without stopping the groove, you try to replicate that same foot pattern with your left foot in the next measure. <laughs> Stupid. Now this one has surprised me because some foot patterns translate just fine, but others are brutally difficult. So adding swing to my left foot, for example, is really hard. Definitely a great exercise if you want to expose all of your left foot's weaknesses because you're just directly comparing it to what your right foot can do. I'm going to be doing this exercise for nearly every practice session moving forward. Now we're gonna close out with just a little bit of controversy because there is one suggestion that I've seen probably almost a dozen times in the comment section of the first video, and I absolutely hate this comment. Under no circumstances will you see me playing rudiments with my feet. But Thomas Lang said. I know, I know. Chill out, Dad. Keep that blood pressure in check. We're gonna talk about it. There is no doubt that practicing rudiments on double bass will yield some kind of benefit. But we need to understand on a technical level what rudiments do for us as drummers because I have a pretty elaborate argument as to why I think rudiments on the feet is a terrible idea. And we're gonna talk about that in episode three. So get your spiciest comments ready because I'm here for them. Thanks for watching, guys. Adam here, the Orlando Drummer, and I will catch you in the next episode. Later. Later.